Good afternoon and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller and I am president of the club. The City Club presents many topics at its programs throughout the week. At our Friday forums, we like to feature subjects of national and international importance for our viewers and listeners across the country. Our topic today concerns each and every one of us, God willing. For our speaker is Mark Friedman, founder and CEO of Civic Ventures, a think tank and research and development organization which helps tap the extraordinary pool of social and human capital of those in the second half of their adult life. It is said that 60 is the new 40. In, 1990, in 1900, the typical American lived to age 47. Today, it's 78. The 77 million baby boomers who began to turn 60 in 2006 are the largest, healthiest, and best educated population of Americans to live beyond their 50s. In large numbers, those folks want to do work that serves a greater good. The best example of this for me is my own 83-year-old mother, Ruth Roller, who is here with us today. She drove an hour and a half to be here. She volunteers with a number of community groups, and it's hard for me to find her at home. The organization founded by Mr. Friedman in 1998, Civic Ventures, helps society achieve the greatest return on the experience and wisdom of our older citizens. Among other things, Mr. Friedman spearheaded creation of Experience Corps, America's largest nonprofit national service program engaging individuals over 55, and the Purpose Prize, which gives annually five $100,000 and five $50,000 awards to social innovators over 60 who create new methods for solving the world's biggest problems. Mr. Friedman is one of the nation's leading thinkers and writers on the opportunities presented by the aging of Americans. His latest book is Encore, Finding Work That Matters in the Second Half of Life. He has been honored with numerous awards and fellowships, some of which are listed in our, our program. He makes his home in San Francisco Bay Area, and we are very happy to have him with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Friedman. Thank you. It's a great honor to be at the City Club, and it's a great honor to talk to you about this subject, which has uh, new poignancy for me, having uh, reached my 50th birthday over the past year. Uh, Joseph Campbell, the uh, wonderful expert on myths, said, midlife is when you get to the top of the ladder and discover it's leaning against the wrong wall. <laughs> and that, that line continues to play in my head. Um, and at the same time, I know that my ladder is going to need to lean against a wall for quite a bit, because along with my AARP card, which I received in the last year, uh, my wife is about to have our third child. Uh, and so we'll have three children under four by this November. For the 50th birthday, I decided, well, this is a time to really do something memorable. We'll go to Australia. Uh, I talked to my wife about that. And uh, this past April, rather than heading to the airport, we got into the car and, and drove up the Pacific Northwest for about a week. And uh, you know, being that these are tough economic times, I decided to use that AARP card. And I got myself a discount on the motel that we stayed at. Uh, so I was very proud of that, say 15%. Uh, and then as soon as I hung up, though, I realized, oh, I hadn't finished the, the reservation the right way. I called back and uh, insisted on getting two cribs in the room. <laughs> and I could hear uh, an alarm going off in the background, which I assume was their fraud alert. Um, but when I arrived at the hotel two days later, uh, they took one look at me and uh, just uh, gave me my AARP discount unquestioned and uncarded. So, uh, in talking to you today about this question of, uh, of the second half of life, I, I come um, as personally as well as, as professionally. But um, professionally, I'd like to talk about what we're um, trying to do at Civic Ventures, and I think one of the great opportunities in American society today. You know, we hear a lot about the demographic revolution, how we'll soon see a doubling of the over 60 population till nearly a quarter of the country is in that age group, uh, and much hand-wringing about this long gray wave of greedy geezers who will soon be taking America to the cleaners. Uh, and I'd like to argue that that uh, need not be the case, despite proclamations that demography is destiny. There's a certain inevitability. And in fact, um, 
that uh, the aging of America, the aging of all of us is, uh, does not need to be uh, exclusively a problem to be solved, but it could be a great opportunity to be seized. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a, a wonderful illustration that starts with some research that some of you may know about. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a story in The New Yorker over the past year about late bloomers that focuses on the research of an economist at the University of Chicago, David Galenson, who is unique among economists in that he studies creativity. Uh, but he studies it from an economic perspective. He looks at artists and, and writers and uh, sculptors, all, all manner of creativity uh, from the perspective of the economic value of the work produced by individuals who are high achievers in these fields. And he's looked over time at the age of people when they produce their most valuable work, um, done all kinds of regression studies. And to Galenson's own surprise, fairly early on, he started discovering two clusters. One, um, no surprise, is uh, among young geniuses. I think of Mozart with, with these beautiful works emerging fully formed from his head at a very young age. And that is our defining conception of, of genius. It's, it's the exclusive province of young people. Um, but to, to Galenson's surprise, there was another bulge, and it was people over the age of 60. Um, and he looked further and discovered not only uh, were, were in an aggregate way the, uh, a second area of, uh, of creative impulse, but some of the greatest artists, household names, Cezanne's most valuable work was done in his late 60s, Louise Bourgeois, the great sculptor was in, in her early 60s teaching middle school in Great Neck, New York, having done nothing of real uh, note, note at that point, she's in her early 80s when she does her most valuable work. And as, as Galenson thought about this, he developed a theory that there are two kinds of genius. There are conceptual geniuses uh, in that Mozart form, but there are also experimental geniuses whose, whose great work comes as a process of trial and error and by its very nature takes a long period of time to be manifest. And uh, I find that enormously heartening, having uh, never produced anything. I, um, I'm taking up interpretive dancing. I think that's going to be <laughs> my great mark on the world. Um, but uh, Galenson, as he thought further about this, has come up with uh, a theory that fits all work at Civic Ventures, which is that, that the older population is not um, only a potential reservoir of creativity and innovation and entrepreneurship, but of social entrepreneurship, of social good, of, of solutions to some of the most vexing problems facing the country today. In that spirit, we launched a prize um, defiantly for innovators over the age of 60. You can't even apply for it if you're under the age of 60 and an innovator. And we uh, received funding from two wonderful foundations, Atlantic Philanthropies and the John Templeton Foundation. The prize was launched three years ago, and um, um, we called for nominations. And that there was a lot of optimism based on, on innovations we were seeing led by older people around the country. But um, there was a question, uh, if you build it, will they actually come? Are they actually out there? And the, you know, the nominations started to trickle in and, and continue to trickle in. And, um, and then the torrent let loose. By the time we were done, there were 1,200 nominations for the five prizes. We had to scramble and create additional prizes and fellows to, just to honor the top 5% of, of this group. And the same thing has happened each year since. In four years of the Purpose Prize, we've had 5,000 nominations uh, for these small number of prizes, which I think is just the tip of the iceberg of, of what's happening all around the country, of people who are who are bringing together those notions of experience and innovation oftentimes thought to be in, in opposition. And uh, we've had one of our most uh, spectacular innovators, a guy by the name of Gene Jones in Tucson, Arizona, is a former World War II bomber pilot. He created his innovation at the age of 84. 